Voice of Victory. We are gonna look back so that we will be reminded of what God has called us to do. We are part of that victorious army, God, that nothing, Lord God, will stop the advancement of your kingdom. You are the chief cornerstone. You are the one who puts us as part of this church. It's a metaphor of victory, a picture of people celebrating in the midst of all the calamities. We can still magnify your goodness. To praise God and to let their campus know that Jesus Christ is Lord of their life. I'm excited about the greatness of the love that we have for one another. He's called us to walk with our heads high and worship Him, not in shame, we will see a harvest of students, high schools, colleges, universities, that the kingdom of God has come and that freedom is made available to them. I believe that each one of us here, even those that are watching online, read their Bibles. And one of my most favorite books in the Bible is Revelation. It is one of the most comprehensive love stories that one can find in the entire 66 books of the Bible. Oftentimes people will say, well, Revelation has 666, it's got the demons, it's got the devils. It's got dragons, but the truth is, one of the most uh, touching verses is what I'm about to read to you today in chapter 22, Revelation, verse 12. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last, the beginning and the end. You know, when we, when we get together and someone will come up here and try to rouse us and to get us excited to praise and worship God, I think it's important to understand the reason why we praise and worship God, the reason why we sing and raise our hands and even get teary-eyed. And for some of us, even kneel down when we worship and praise God. One of the reasons is because He is a promise-keeping God. One of His most intense attributes is His faithfulness. What He said, He will do. Because He is not man that He should lie. But He will always keep His promises. He said He will come back. And when He comes back, He will come back in great power. And not only that, He is praise Him because He is faithful. We praise Him because He is our judge. Nothing escapes His righteous, holy eyes. He will come back in power to judge the living and the dead. And that is His promise. But He is no ordinary judge. He is the righteous judge. And not only do we praise and worship Him because He is the righteous judge, we praise and worship Him because He is the King of Kings. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end. Doesn't that excite you to lift your voices up in worship and in praise? Let's pray. Lord, You are the Alpha and Omega. You are the first and the last. You are the beginning and the end. You are faithful and you are our righteous judge. Wala na po kami hihingin pang iba. Dahil doon kakanta po kami. Dahil doon sisigaw kami. Dahil doon papalapak kami. Dahil napakapait din yun po Diyos. In Jesus' name, we pray in all of God's people said, Amen and Amen. Tara, kanta tayo. Let me be 
and rejoice And every nation lift their voice You're the one who wanted out we see You created everything No one else about your name All your works display your majesty
place as I wait Sing in spite of the pain I stand in your grace Embracing the dark of the night This fate is sure The light of the morning will shine I will endure For to live is Christ I cling to the hope of the promise For all of my days And to die is gain With gladness I'll carry my cross Your life Oh, to live is Christ I cling to the hope of the promise For all of my days And to die is gain With gladness I'll carry my cross This life is yours And your love is mine I'm 
Yes, I've decided to follow Jesus for all of my days. I have decided.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you. Thank you. In our relationship with the Lord, just like any other relationships, it's two-way. We, we speak to God through our prayers. He listens to us. He speaks to us through His Word and we listen to Him. But when it comes to benefits, when it comes to benefits, it is always one way. What benefit does God get from, from His relationship with us? Nothing. And what, on the other hand, what benefit does, do we get from our relationship with Him? Everything that we need. His life, His blessings. In this benefit, we always, in, in this relationship, we always benefit from Him. We love Him because He first loved us. And how did He show His love for us when we were still sinners? Christ died for us. God is so good. God is so good. And He deserves the best worship. He deserves the best praise. And now we respond in worship. We respond in thanksgiving. We respond in, in surrender because He deserves it. Lord, we are forever grateful for Your kindness. Who, we, who are we? Lord, that you are mindful of us. You did not spare your own son, but he, you gave him up to restore us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us, Father. Lord, some of us this morning, probably some of us are tired, not physically, but tired because of the things that are, that are happening in their lives. Lord, this morning, will you remind us? Remind us of, of how much you love us Remind us of your promises, Lord, that you will never leave us. You will never abandon us. Lord Jesus, you are our strength. We declare our hope in you, Lord. Some of us need healing right now. Thank you, Lord, for your word when you said in your word that you are our healer. Why don't you uh, ask God for your healing in faith? Lord, thank you. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are sick right now, Lord. Will you heal them in the name of Jesus? Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. And some of us, Lord, are, are praying for provision for our families. Lord, thank you that you are our Father in heaven, that you are our great provider. We lift them all up to you, Lord. Will you provide for all our needs, Lord? Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. Let your will be done in our lives. Let your, have, have your way in us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning. Uh, before you take your seats, why don't you greet the person beside you? Okay, so uh, if this is your first time here in, uh, in church, you are in Victory and we welcome you. Uh, here in Victory, we exist for two reasons, to honor God and make disciples. So if you are not yet part of a Victory group, you may approach the leaders and the pastors and also the, the ushers. We will help you to, to uh, be a part of a Victory group. And for our time of giving, I would like to call on Grace. Good morning. For our giving, let me encourage us with a word from 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 11 to 13. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. This passage of scripture used only words that are superlative to describe God. That means to the highest degree. 
And we serve a God who is above all, who is majestic, who has all the riches and honor. And He is not just the God we serve. We call Him Abba Father. One of the fondest memories that I have of my dad was when he took us to McDonald's one time. Since life was hard, I knew McDonald's as, uh, as only for occasions. So that time, I didn't know if he got a bonus from work, but he took us there. And for my food, I was expecting only a regular burger. But to my surprise, he came back with one Big Mac for each of me, my brother, and my sister. Imagine a Big Mac, how it looks like to a seven-year-old me. It was really a feast. Our Father in Heaven owns the whole expanse of the universe, the heavens and the earth. And, and that is how rich He is. And sometimes we forget that. And today, we know that this riches belongs to us as well because we are His children. When the big issues in our lives sets in, we can go back to this word knowing that He is bigger than that. We sometimes are constrained moving in the little things that we see in our, in our hands. And, and we are bounded by that. But when we see that our God is a, a provider, we can move in faith. We can step out in faith. And today, even as we give, we can do that. We can do that. Why don't we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you that even in the, in the, in the vastness of your creation, you see each one of us. You are mindful of each one of us. You love us. You see us. And thank you that you are our personal God. Thank you that you see every need in this room. Lord God, even as we give today, we stand in faith knowing that you are the source of abundance in this life. We love you, we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You can choose among the many ways to give. You have envelopes on your seats. And for those of our who are techie, you can choose our digital ways of giving that will be flashed on our screens. God bless everyone. to uh, come to our Victory at 40 conference that's going to happen on June 27 and 28. That is, of course, our celebration of our 40th anniversary. This is open to all, all right? This is not just for our leaders, the people who serve with us. This is for everyone who's part of Victory. This is Victory at 40. Our, we're going to celebrate our 40th anniversary. There's going to be three runs, June 27 at 6 p.m., uh, June 28th at 1 p.m., but we're reserving June 28th, 7 p.m. for the young people, not the young declaring people. <laughs> we're, we're reserving it for the genuine young people, right? If you're in the campus, most especially, please register on June 28th. For the rest of us, I'm not even going to uh, June 28th. You pick one, all right? The runs are the same except for June 28, which is geared towards the youth. Sige kayo, pag pumaten kayo dyan, your ears are going to... It's different experience for our youth, all right? Before we go to our series, um, I'd like to acknowledge today all the... If you're a victory group leader, small group leader, could you please stand? If you're... a if you've been serving with us in Kids Church, in the music team, could you please stand, everyone, the, the, the ones who were serving or your victory group leader? Kahit hindi current, kahit uh, you took a pause, just, just, just please stand, just please stand all across this place. If you're a victory group leader, you've been serving Kids Church, music team, ushering, please stand. 
I think it's really important for me to, to do this because one of the last things that Bishop Ferdy did during our leaders huddle on March 24 was to thank all the people who serve with us and to, to all the leaders. So on behalf of Bishop Ferdy, thank you for standing with us all throughout these years. We had the memorial last Friday. Uh, no one cried that day, okay? All, was, all of us were sobbing. <laughs> but on behalf of Bishop Ferdy, seriously, thank you for standing with us. Not just me and pa Bishop Ferdy, not just, uh, just, not just the morning, but us, the church, for standing in a, with us. Thank you for your sacrifice, for your service. And as we continue to honor God and serve Him, I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be pleased with our service. Why don't we pray for all of you? Lord, thank you for everyone that's standing. Thank you, Lord God, that you have called them for such a time like this to serve you. That may be in the music ministry, in the ushering, as small group leaders. But Lord, I pray that you would remind them that their service is unto you. I pray, Lord God, that you would continue to use their strength, their abilities, their wisdom for the furtherance of your kingdom. Thank you, Lord God, that they have chosen to follow you and decided to follow you. And by your grace, we will follow you all the days of our lives. We bless them. We thank you for their lives. Bless them and their families. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may take your seats. Um, I wouldn't be preaching today because last week I sang. So, baka ko anong gawin ko today. So I decided to invite our senior pastor to, to preach uh, week two of our series, Jesus Period. Please give a warm, warm, warm welcome to Pastor Noel and Dicho. Pastor Noel. Thank you, Pastor Aldwin. And, uh, you know, the, the truth is, you know, uh, Pastor, Pastor Aldwin and I, we decided for me to come here to also personally thank everyone because you have accepted Bishop Ferdy as uh, our, one of our spiritual leaders. And I also thank you for honoring him and, you know, even grieving with his family. Uh, well, this, of course, obviously this in connection to his passing. Again, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I want to be here this morning, of course, to, to preach the Word of God, but at the same time, to personally thank you. Amen? Okay, so uh, just like what Pastor Alvin said, uh, we will proceed with our series. Can I just invite everyone to please stand and open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 2. This is the second installment of our series, Jesus, period. And there's a... Uh, a reason why we put the period there. That's not an accident, okay? It's not just one sentence, period, Jesus. But, but, you know, that declares the supremacy of Christ. But we'll, we'll be reading from uh, verse 1 to verse 8 of uh, Colossians chapter 2. And I'll be reading from the NIV 1984. It says here in verse 1, I want you to know how much I'm struggling for you and for those at Laodicea. And for all who have not met me personally, my purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see you how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So then, just as you, as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him, rooted and built up in Him, Strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Let us pray, Lord, we ask that you anoint the preaching of your word this morning, O God. Let us be greeted 
by the strength and the power of your word this morning, O oh God. As you anoint, I pray, God, that you open the hearts of my brothers and sisters to receive your word, Lord, in their own individual circumstance, Lord, whatever uh, context, individual or personal context that each one has. We believe, O oh God, that your word will be fully relevant, O oh God, in these in this, uh, circumstances. Thank you, Lord. I pray, God, that you'll be honored this morning as we preach your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can't sit down. You know, one of the things that happens every day that probably a lot of us can overlook. It happens every day. Many times in a day is what we call as weather forecasting. Okay, weather forecasting. It happens in the television, in the radio, right? And you know why weather forecasts, why they're important is because that informs us of what? The weather that's going to happen in a day. And you know, that's important because like for example, in, uh, in areas like uh, the, the weather changes quickly, like for example, in the San Francisco Bay Area, it's important that people, before they leave for work every day, they have to know what is the weather for the day because that, that could give them a, uh, like uh, an idea of whether they'll bring warm clothes, warm clothing uh, that will serve as an insulator for the cold weather or you know, uh, especially in some or in uh, cold places. But it's important for us to, number one, listen to the word of the weather forecast. Because if we'll not, then we'll suffer the consequence. However shallow you might consider them. But like, for example, I was like in a, I was in a, Alabama to visit my daughter last December and there was a snow. They said that that was the, the coldest in 25 years. And we were there. You know, it's usually snows in, uh, in that uh, area, that, that part of Alabama in Huntsville, like uh, one or, for one or two days. But they said it's the coldest. And it snowed for almost a week. And I remember the very first day it was announced that it's going to snow that day. I, I, I even dared to drive. Eh, first time ko po naka-experience ng yelong bumabagsak talaga. Akala ko lang, snow. Eh, anak ni Alvin, pero... <laughs> but uh, but th that snow was strong. Again, that was the first time. To the point na ang dilim ng kalye, pag pumepreno ko... Dumudulas yung kotse. And then uh, the, the, the ice was like, even if it's snowflakes, it's like scraping my windshield. But because number one, I ignored the forecast. That's one thing about weather forecasts. If you ignore them, then there's a big possibility that you will suffer the consequence of the harshness of the weather. Or if you will not, totally, or, or if you will totally ignore it, then same thing. Eh, pastor, wala naman kaming mga snow dito. Wala naman tayong snow dito sa Pilipinas. O kaya, very cold weather? No. It's still important even in Manila. Like, for example, we have to check the weather every day. Well, not every day, but especially when we wash our clothes <laughs> here in Manila. Because when we dry our clothes, we have to bring it out, out, to, to the balcony area so that it will get dry. But if we miss the weather forecast or if we totally ignore that, especially if it's a rainy day, then you know what's going to happen. Wala nang snow. Pero ulit ka maglaba. Diba? Kita mo na nga, sinabi na nga sa, sa radyo. May nagra-radyo pa ba ngayon? 
Tatawa si Pao, Pao ha. Minamata mo yung pag uh, technologically challenge ko. Anyway, it's, it's very obvious. A lot of times, overnight, we'll leave the, the clothes outside and in the morning, it's wet again and we just realize that rain came and, and wet the, the clothes. But you, you get the point. The importance of weather forecasts. But why am I saying this? Because the truth is, I, I'm saying this because in the passage that we just read, the Apostle Paul was in some ways doing a weather forecast. And we know the weather forecast will give us if today is a fair weather, but then again, it also tells us that bad weather happens. And by now, I know that you know that I'm referring to, when I say weather forecast, I'm referring to a spiritual weather forecast. You don't leave your clothes outside. Because, uh, well, probably you have seen dark clouds coming and they've warned you about it. Then you have to respond. And, and, and by the way, most weather forecasts, they'll give us advice. Oh, you bring your clothes. Ah, you bring your clothes. Yeah, warm clothing or bring your umbrella. There are advices that they give. Same thing. And let me submit to you this morning that the verses, the second half of the passage that we read this morning, that beginning in verse 6, it says here that, uh, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. This is actually the advice that the Apostle Paul gave. But at the time that he sent the letter to the Colossians, it was actually a fair weather. And we can see that in verse 5 because here in verse 5, he wrote here, For though I am absent from you in body, how many of you hear that applies to us too? Right? Sino ba sa inyo rito nakita niyo si Apostol Pablo nasa McDonald's? He's not present with us uh, physically, but he, he wrote here, For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit. And delight to see you how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. It's a fair weather situation for the Colossians at this time. But like what we said, bad weather happens. And in fact, you know, Epaphras, one of the, the disciples of the Apostle Paul, reported to him that dark clouds are coming. Because here in verse 4, it says here, I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. And you know, there are things in the, during the, when, when, when this was originally written, there were like thoughts, ideas that challenge the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I hope you believe that what you believe affects your lifestyle. Right? These are just thoughts and ideas at this moment. But the Apostle Paul, early on, warned them about the dangers of entertaining these thoughts and the heresies, if you may. And it ranges, well, up to now, even if you're going to review uh, New Testament scholarship, they cannot define exactly yet the nature of the, the false teachings that they were receiving at this time. Because it ranges from the teachings of Judaism, like you can get saved by not working on a Sabbath or uh, getting yourself circumcised. Of course, that obviously applies for the men. To be a member of the family of believers, 
or doing some religious rituals. Okay, that's present in their midst at that time. What else? Worshipping angels. I hope you will read the, the whole epistle of the Colossians. It will just take you like 10 minutes. Worshipping angels. How many of you here, you believe there are angels? Okay. There are angels, supernatural beings, but you don't worship them. If, if I may add, Pastor Advin, don't even pray to the saints. The Bible tells, my Bible tells me that you pray for the saints, not pray to the saints. Okay? But that's just an addition. What else? There are like uh, people who taught either naturalism, meaning everything is just material, there's no spiritual world, or even they teach pantheism, like pan from the Greek word all, theism, God, like everything could be God. Like the trees, diba nakikita nyo ba yung mga t-shirt, have you hugged a tree lately? Diba? That, that the spirits could be in the cows. What you believe affects your lifestyle. Well, we, we don't eat cows because the spirits of our grandparents are in the cows. Some of you are smiling, but there are cultures that really teach that. That's why they don't eat. Ano sa kanila, burger, pag kinagat mo, baka masaktan yung lolo mo. <laughs> and, and that could affect your food supply. What, whatever you believe affects your lifestyle. But that's why the Apostle Paul saw the dark clouds coming and he was issuing this or giving this weather forecast. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in the Lord, it's the same thing in the 21st century Philippines. Probably we don't have the exact same uh, ideas that contest the Lordship of Jesus Christ. But there are dark, dark clouds coming. Let me just say, the Philippines, like a survey that, that was done years ago, the Philippines is one of the, or the most religious country in the world. I could say that because of that, we still have fair weather now. But let me warn you, bad weather happens, and we could see dark clouds coming. Nowadays, we don't know anymore well, at least in our society, if there are really two sexes. I don't know. But I I'm still puzzled by this thought. When there's a, a gender reveal, right? The color is just pink or blue. Whenever a child is born, they just say it's a boy or a girl. I don't know the confusion right now. The Bible tells us that God created male and female. But that's why I'm saying that dark clouds are coming. It's going to contest the Lordship of Jesus Christ in the family and how it's being delivered to us. There's a weather forecast. That the Apostle Paul is trying to remind us, even if he's not here physically. That's why this text, I believe, is still relevant to every one of us in the 21st century. But like I said, anywhere, in, in most weather forecasts, they give us advice. How many of you here, you're ready to listen to the advice? Dark cloud is coming, but this is the advice. Verse 6, it says here, So then, 
Just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, let me just pause first and unpack that, that introductory part of the sentence. Just as you receive Christ as Lord, and in this series, we put emphasis on declaring that Jesus is Lord. We, we put emphasis on the truth that the truth of the supremacy of Christ. Amen? Jesus is Lord. And you receive that. And there's a, a misconception about receiving the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Some people think that you receive the Lordship so that you will get saved. Receive Him now so that you'll get saved. Well, that's not the biblical one. Biblical one tells us you receive the Lordship because you got saved. Can you tell the difference? You're receiving the Lordship because you got saved. It makes sense to you because you got saved. Wala po yung pinagkaiba. Halimbawa, si Pastor Alvin nagbigay ng memo. By the way, ka-opisina ko po. Pastor Alvin is my office mate. Pastor John? Hindi pala si Chris. Asawa ni Chris. Who else? Si Pao? And if Pastor Alvin will issue a memo, guess nyo kung sino makakatanggap nun? Yung mga ka-opisina namin. Ay, kalibawa, si Jojo, di na, nakat, makakatanggap kaya siya ng memo ni Pastor Alvin? Hindi eh, naman siya. Office mate eh. That's, really good. That's why, us receiving the Lordship of Jesus Christ, that means that you belong to a family. Amen? Number one, I hope that does not diminish that the Lordship of Jesus Christ is dependent on whether we receive that or not. Jesus is Lord whether you receive Him as such or not. You know, just by reading the epistles like He upholds everything by the power of His Word, that's an expression of His Lordship. How many of you here, you're glad you can predict that the sun will rise tomorrow? Do you know who regulates that? Of course, the Lord God created the scientific laws or the physical laws of the universe. But at the same time, my Bible tells me that He actively makes sure that that happens. It's the Lordship of Jesus Christ that makes sure. It's, the universe is not just a, like a watch. Kung ano pa yung mga mahal na rilo, yung pa yung sinususian eh. Diba? But it, when you uh, crack a watch, you can just leave it there. Tama po ba? Tama ba? That is not how the universe operates. But God has taken a hands off right after He established the physical laws. Now there's an active involvement of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He makes sure that happens. Hindi po watchmaker si Lord na iniiwan niya lang yung relo na kanyang sinusian. And like I said, that is not to diminish the Lordship of Jesus Christ when we say believers receive the Lordship of Jesus Christ. But the other half of what I want us to understand with regards to this introduction in the sentence is that if I may just refresh your memory of what we talked about last week, especially in chapter 1, verse 10. It says here, if I may read chapter 1, verse 10, and we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please Him in every way. That means living a life worthy of the Lord that you have to live a life that corresponds to how you value the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Are you here? Do you value Lordship? Or that's just some kind of an esoteric concept to you? Or it's just like, just a, a plain title? Ah, pag, dahil pagka wala ka lang maitawag kay Lord, tawagin mo lang siya Lord. 
Para bang yung pag nasa kanto ka, di ba? Pakakita ka ng, ng lalaki. Alam ba, tatawa, eh, hindi mo alam pangalan. Generic title na lang. Kuya, pakiabot naman nung. O kaya, mama, hindi po yung ganon. When we say, Jesus Lord, that means a different thing. Christians in the first century died because of declaring Jesus is Lord. Because all throughout the Roman Empire, people greet other people by shouting, Caesar is Lord. Happy New Year, Caesar is Lord. Get well soon, Caesar is Lord. But when Christians got saved, it became different. Get well soon, Caesar is Lord. A Christian is in a bian. He will not answer back, Caesar is Lord. They'll answer, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Living lives worthy of the way you value Lordship. Jesus is Lord. And then, parami ng parami. The number gets bigger, the people who confess Jesus is Lord. To the point that it caught the attention of the authorities and they began to persecute Christians. But that's the second half of what? Why we want to say that as Christians, as you receive the Lordship of Jesus Christ, we have to live lives worthy of how we value Lordship. Are you here? And we should live Accordingly. Pagka kristyano ka na, huwag ka na magtago ng mga resibo para pag magre-reimburse ka, kunyari, ang laki ng nagastos mo. That's not living lives worthy of the Lord. When you work as a Christian, alam niyo ba yung mga Wendy's? Sa opisina? When the cat is away, the mouse will play. <laughs> Birds! Absent si boss. Pwede tayo mag-Facebook maghapon. Yung iba, extreme pa, nagti-TikTok. Diba? TikTok pa. But if you're already a Christian, live lives worthy of the Lord. Jesus is your boss. You have to give your best in your work. That's why... Dark clouds are coming. But the advice is, so then, just as you receive Christ Jesus Lord, continue to live in Him. Our faith will be contested in this life. People will tell you, when, you, when they see you reading your Bible, they'll tell you, Pare, ano binabasa mo? Bible, ang baduy mo. People will give that comment. When you pray before you eat in the cafeteria, people will tell you, Pero ba't ka ba nagpe-pray? Hindi ka ba nahihiya? Ang daming nakakakita sa'yo? These things will come. But the Apostle Paul is telling us through this text that we should continue in our faith. Are you here? Tuloy-tuloy lang po tayo kahit na ano pong sabihin ng mga tao. Pare, nang bababae ka ba? Eh, may asawa ko eh. Ang baduy mo naman. May asawa ka lang, di ka na nang bababae. Well, our faith will be contested. But we'll just have to continue. As the Lordship of Jesus Christ, we have to live according to his teaching. Now, let us continue unpacking this advice. Verse 7, rooted and built up in Him. You know, these uh, verbs here are interesting because at first you think that it is past tense. Rooted, built up. It's not past tense. It's actually passive. What do I mean by that? Of course, we all know verbs are either active or passive. When we say active verb, it's the, the subject is the one who does the action. 
But when it's passive, the subject is the receiver of the action. And hindi po yan. Well, in some ways, it's past tense, but the, the true sense of the word is that it is passive. An action was done to us as believers. That's why we are rooted and built up in Him. Do you know that an action was done to you as believers? That roots, and if I may just go into a dendrogeo, dendrological language, and by dendrology, the, that branch of science that focuses on the study of trees, or in, in a much broader sense, botany. Okay? So, but anyway, para, para lang isipin niyo matalino ako, kaya ako dinadrap. <laughs> Insecure kasi ako eh. <laughs> But the Apostle Paul began to use this metaphor of a plant. And we all know the function of the roots. And that is to stabilize a plant or a tree because the, the deeper the roots, the more stable. But there's another thing that, that happens that operates through the roots of the plant and that is nourishment. We are being nourished. Yung sustansya ng lupa, nung mga pinapasok nating pandilig, e tinatanggap po ng halaman through the roots. And as a result, and it's a, it's a good uh, picture here because the, the deeper that you get, the higher you can get. Kaya rooted and built up in Him. If we stay connected to the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and by the way, him being the head of the church, as you can see a lot of times here in Colossians, that also gives us a sense of community that we're all connected. Right? Like I have a, a, an icon here which was shown earlier, misfire, but you know. Balikan po natin in the human icon. How many of you here, you know, this is not, the, this is not reality? You know why? Because the head is floating. Do you have friends whose head are, heads are floating, not, not connected to the body? That's not re real, right? That is not the church. We have to be connected to the head. More of this. Yan. Right? Tingnan nyo nga, konektado ba yung leg? May mga leg ba yung katabi nyo? We don't detach ourselves from the Lord, but there is a sense of a community. And guess what? I realized that there's a... a, a an illustration or a, a thing here on earth that actually illustrates that our interconnection as a community as we are nourished by the Lord Jesus Christ as we are being built up or being grown by the work of the Lord Jesus Christ there's an interconnection and you know they say that the largest land animal is what? don't look at your seatmate nah Elephants. But the largest animal is the blue whale. But guess what? There is this largest organism in the world. And it's called Pando. Well, they, they named him, they named that thing Pando. Yeah, po. It's actually an Aspen clone something tree entering the Pando. And you, if you go, go to Utah, there's this place that you thought it's a forest. And there are many trees on the surface, but you, guess what? This is just one unit. What do you mean? All these trees came just from one seed. And beneath these trees, they're actually interconnected to prove that they're just one. The root system is all interconnected and scientists say that these trees were just cloned by the previous one and until they all stay together being nourished together and growing together amen now they say this is the largest organism in the planet 
But I say, there's an organism that's larger. Alam niyo po ba kung ano yun? It's the church. Our roots are interconnected. We are one, many trees and yet one organism. Same thing with us. We don't look alike. Sino po ba mga magkakamuka exactly carrying the same face as yours? Siguro pag, dahil, by, by the way, bukas po, birthday ni Pastor Cleve. Baka magmaskara tayo ng mga mukha ni Cleve. We can look alike, but you're not really like that. But we're all part of one community. That's why when the Apostle Paul wrote here, rooted and built up in him, and, and take note, there's another verb, strengthened in the faith, faith as you were taught. That gives us the value of discipleship. Are you still here? But that's why this is important. The Apostle Paul saying, but weather happens, dark clouds are coming. But remember, continue to live in Him, rooted and built up and strengthened in the faith, just as you, are, you were taught. There's a value of discipleship, of getting connected and getting that faith passed down to every one of us. And, you know, number one, I want us all to get connected. We can't be isolated from the rest. Amen? Most of us know the pressure that we hear or that get us bombarded outside of these walls of the church. Like the, the examples that I gave you, people will tell you, "Di ganon bababay ang baduy mo. Hindi ganon dadaya sa reimbursement mo. Naive ka, de ba? Uh, wala kang muwang sa mundo, de ba? To put that in Tagalog. But you know, again, we have this illustration. Like if you were grilling chicken. Roasting chicken, you know, you have that bunch of charcoal, lighted charcoal. May, may mga baga dun eh. Pag hiniwalay mo yung isa dun, may baga pa rito, there's still light in, in that, and heat in that bunch of charcoal, but the one that's separated could easily be extinguished. Buti na lang, dinigtahan nyo ako eh. I was about to say, to be turned off eh. Extinguished. <laughs> but that's why you have to be with the rest. And that's why when people bombard you with this worldly values or lack of, I hope you see the, the value of you being connected to the rest of the body of Christ. That there's a counterweight that you get to hear. If someone will tell me from my small group will tell me, Pastor, baduy daw ako dahil di ako ng bababae. My counterweight is, mas baduy sila. Pare, normal tayo. Ito ang buhay ng Panginoon. Huwag kang makikinig sa mga insecure at duwag na mga yan. Di ba? Na ang security nila kinukuha sa pagiging mga pamumuhay na ganyan. That's why you need to hear and, and need to, to see the counterweight happening in small groups. That's why, you know, you, you think we're just throwing these things, honor God, make disciples. No, you have to be connected. Apostle Paul is giving us the warning, weather forecast, continue to live in Him. Don't live alone. You are an easy prey if you live alone. You have to live with the rest of the pack. <laughs> Are you here? Being strengthened in the faith and overflowing with thankfulness. But by the way, let me just uh, give more comments about being strengthened in the faith as you were taught. Like, how many parents do we have here this, this morning? Yung mga magulang, yung may anak na magulang, hindi yung... Magulang na wala na mga anak, di ba? 
Iba yung ibig sabihin nun. You know, there's truth too to the saying that you cannot give what you do not have. Right? How do you... The, one sad thing about Christianity in the 21st century is there's a refusal to pass down the faith to the next generation. And that word refusal is not an active refusal a lot of times. It's refusal in a way that you don't do anything. You don't teach your kids to pray before eating. You don't encourage them to read the Bible. Because with regards to the faith, if you're not doing anything, you're actually doing something. And that thing is counterproductive to the faith. And as a parent, I hope that it's not your goal in life just to give all the material blessings that you can give to your kids. Unfortunately, a lot of us, that's our default definition of parenting. You know, I, I remember my parents, I've been in this again. Anak, mag-aral ka ng mabuti dahil ayan lang ang maipapamanan namin sa inyo. Totoo naman po yun. I thank my parents for enabling us to finish college and get a degree. But the truth is, they did not notice, I just reminded them later on when I got saved, that the, the most precious treasure that they, they actually gave us is the fear of God. Nung naborn again na lang ako, doon ko pinaalala sa kanila, Nay, hindi naman po. Salamat po sa edukasyon. Naaalala ko yung nanay ko noon. Pag na, nabalitaan niya, may ginawa kong kalukohan. I was in, in first year high school uh, with my friends. Again, talking about counterweight. We, we have bikes. And one time we, we realized it's cool to have antennas on our bikes. Eh, mantaking mo, nagna, nagnanakaw kami ng antena ng kotse. I was 13 years old. First time lang siguro narinig ng anak ko to, pero... <laughs> <laughs> Ninanakaw namin, lalagay namin sa bike namin. Ba nung nabalitaan ng, ng nanay ko? Anak. Most of the time, gala ng nanay ko, mabait akong anak. <laughs> Ang balitaan niya, anak, magkaroon ka ng takot sa Diyos. Secondary na lang naman, pag nahuli ka ng polis. But the basic warning is, magkaroon ka ng takot sa Diyos, anak, hindi inyo yan. But I thank God because I realized that is the most precious treasure that my parents gave me, gave us, me and my siblings. But thank God, that's why I'm saying, stay connected so that you can pass down the faith to the next generation. Because you cannot give what you do not have. And I'm hoping that, that you're not doing anything. And like I said, doing nothing is doing something. And in addition, this morning, I want to take a, a, a step Something that's like a step further than that. If you're here, you're a parent, you have small kids, join the kids' church. Magturo po kayo doon para malaman nyo. Yung, yung, uh, it, it's uh, like a uh, painful but, but uh, uh, something that's worth it. Painful in a way that's really sacrifice. But I hope that you'll enjoy the sacrifice. Especially pag mahaba ang sermon ni Pastor Adwin. <laughs> Take that extra step. If you're a parent of small kids, you should be signing up to the kids' church. Eh, paano yan, Pastor? No, no, you, you will just assign you once a month. And if you want, don't want to miss the sermons of Pastor Adwin, you can help in our Saturday 5 p.m. Kids Church. <laughs> These things are valuable. Amen? And of course, the, the last part is overflowing in thankfulness. You know, I like N.T. Wright when he said that this is both 
thanksgiving and thanks living. Yung thankfulness. Yan, sabi ni Auntie Wright. Thanksgiving, you declare thanks to what the Lord has done for us. Declare. But thanksgiving is that we live lives as a great expression of gratitude for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, that, that's the same thing as living lives that's worthy of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. But that's why it has to overflow from us. Both overflowing from our mouth and overflowing in our lifestyle. You know, you cannot outgive God, but we always tell that. We always say that. Same thing. We do not wish to pay the Lord's goodness with our lifestyle. We cannot outgive Him, but still, at least that, that thing that we do is thanks living. Our expression of gratitude. Lord, I'll give my best in my work or in my school because that's my expression of gratitude to you. Not so that I could have more blessings, but I thank you for your goodness and therefore I'll give my best to you. Lord, I'll be a godly parent training my kids because that is a big expression of my gratitude to you. Thanks, living. Lord, I will talk to other people about the gospel because that's my expression of gratitude to you. Thanks, living. That's why the Apostle Paul included that here. And of course, the last few parts, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. That's why if we can just stay, I know there's a lot of like naturalism, you know, denying that the supernatural. Like I am sad that even some evangelical Christians are becoming naturalistic. They cannot accept anymore that a prayer for the sick. Thank you for that, George. You prayed for the sick earlier. They deny that anymore. They even mock, even in Facebook, nakikita ko mga Kristiyano, they mock. Kung itong mga Kristiyano na ito, nakakapatid natin, ba't kaya nagpe-pray sila for a miracle of healing? Especially during the pandemic. Chinachallenge pa ng iba. Pumunta kayo ng ospital kung talaga naniniwala kayo sa miracle. I, I was saddened by that. How could this Brothers and sisters in the faith shut their minds off that truth that miracles could happen. Are you here? Come on. Uba, nagiging, they're leaning toward naturalism and they're shutting their minds off supernaturalism. Of course, not every prayer there's a, like a miracle that will happen. And I'm not denying that there are people who are on the extreme side to the point na medyo, sabi na natin, weird. Even in the, the operation of the spiritual gifts. Right? But guess what? Even if there are false ones, it does, it does not mean that there are no real ones. Are you here? May mga nag nga ng operation ng spiritual gift. Like, even if it's not the Lord's word, they'll say, that's say it, the Lord. Idea niya lang yun. But that does not mean that there are no real ones. When we were warned about fake 500 peso bills, few months ago, Central Bank warned us about that. That does not mean, that does not mean that there are real 500 peso bills. Ibig ba sabihin, sabi ng Central Bank, may mga peking 500 pesos. Lahat na lang, nakakita 500 peso bills, pinagtatapon mo. Onggongs ka nun, di ba? But you know enough you, to, to, to be convinced that there are real ones. And that should not stop you from, di ba? Bibigyan ako ng anak ko ng 500 pesos, kunyari. Ayoko tanggapin yan, peke yan eh.
But that's why it's sad that some, and let me quote evangelical Christians, think that there's no more supernatural. That's what they're saying here. The elemental basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. Naturalism, what else? Secularism. I think therefore I am. I could think and therefore that is the final authority. No, you have to be guided by the, the word of the Lord. That's why we encourage everyone. Because we, we pray, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But the question is, what is your will, Lord? Then you have to search the Lord's will in this word. That's why hindi po laos yung Biblia. Some people think that it's already outdated. It cannot address our 21st century issues. No. Read the word. And I'll take a, a, a step further. Buy a hard copy. Like uh, what I always tell our pastors. Thank God for digital Bibles. But you know, your kids, your small kids cannot un underline the words in your phone. Ah, magtaka ka, ba't puro linya tong telepono ko? Buy them a hard copy. And I'm sure you're not going to buy tablets for them. It's high time. Dark clouds are coming. But the weather forecast is continue to live in the Lord. You know, we talk about Pando. But guess what? This was the, the news. Sabi po nila, Smithsonian Smithsonian uh, magazine. It says, Pando, one of the world's largest organisms, is dying. And th there's a, a sentence here, mule deer and cattle are eating saplings before the clonal grove can regenerate. Scientists were trying to save Pando. Okay? But in, earlier, we mentioned that the church is actually the, living, the largest living organism. Is the church dying? I don't think so. And besides, we were already given the advice. And not just an advice. If you're going to read the Bible again, especially in that start of verse 6, it is actually an imperative, a command. And as we continue to live under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, this largest organism on earth, called the church will not die and let me announce boldly that the church of Jesus Christ is not dying it's getting stronger every day amen that's why as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ who are interconnected let's continue to live under the Lordship of our Savior who has the supremacy above all amen let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Salamat mo. Can I, can I just ask everyone to please stand before we leave this place? I want us. I'll give you two minutes. Two minutes. If you can pray on your own and rededicate your life to the Lord. However you want to pray or in whatever language, just pray. The Lord will hear you. The Lord will he hear you. Pray. Just pray now. I'll give you two minutes. In your own words. Talk to the Lord. Thank Him. Give words of adoration. Ask Him to, to give you that ability to continue living for His glory. And pray and tell Him that you are rededicating your life to Him. Yes, Lord, we thank You. Thank You, Lord. We are re rededicating our lives to You. This morning, Lord, we, we confess that You are our Lord. That You are our life. We're dependent on You. Lord, give us the ability to live lives worthy of your Lordship. 
Salamat po, Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. Come on, keep confessing that. Keep, keep telling Him that your life is for Him. Lord, this is not Jesus plus, but this is Jesus period. We also confess that the Bible is the final authority in faith and life. We also confess that the atoning work, that, that thing that, that actually saved us is completed by the, Lordship, by, by the Lord Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Let us also confess that salvation is by grace through faith and that by telling other people about the good news is actually central to our faith. Salamat po, Lord. We, we confess that. Let me pray for you, especially the parents who have young kids. Lord, I pray for these parents, Lord, that they will be enabled, that they'll get to, to have a, like a realization of the importance of getting connected, Lord. We cannot give what we do not have. But first and foremost, these parents will have this desire to live and, and learn from the, the faith, Lord. Getting connected and having exchange. It's not, it's not like a, a declaration of weakness if we have committed mistakes in, in our parenting, Lord. But part of getting connected is to admit that by grace, by your, your grace, only by your grace, we could continue on passing down our faith to the next generation. Thank you, Lord, for enabling us to, to live this way. And if you're here, if you're here, probably you have adult kids. And in your mind, Pastor, I have done that in the past. I have taught my kids about the faith, but they're, but, but they're staying away from the church. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you, Lord, for these brothers and sisters who are thinking, it's not working. I pray, Lord, that you open their eyes to see. That those seed that they have planted in the hearts of these young kids are going to grow, Lord. There's even, Lord, this beginning to sprout in their hearts. We just have to continue praying. We just have to continue relating to them and telling them about the importance of living for the Lord. Salamat po, Panginoon. I pray, God, that, that uh, you open our eyes about that. It's, so, it's just that, that uh, we have, each one of us, we have our own spiritual work, walk, oh God. It's, it, it's not necessarily patterned to our experience, but we believe. Nevertheless, we know that that seed is alive. And it's growing, oh God. Salamat po, Lord. Even if we don't see that happening right now. Thank you because you said in your word that we walk by faith and not by sight. And we believe, Lord, that, that the gospel that we planted in their hearts will grow. Just like what you said. Someone planted a seed, someone watered it, but it is you who causes the growth. And we confess that and we say, we believe that. It will happen in the lives of our children. In Jesus' name. Can we sing this song before I give this mic to Pastor Alvin? For to live is Christ. I cling to the hope of the promise for all of my day. And to die is King. Gladness I'll give.
Pastor Noel said that Jesus is Lord whether you receive Him or not. His Lordship is not dependent on the decision if we receive Him or not. But to those who receive Him, our hope and our prayer is that our confession would follow the way we live. For us who considers or received Jesus as Lord, there are going to be decisions that are going to be difficult that we make. That because we follow Him, we have to make those crucial decisions in order to glorify Him and honor Him even in our lives. And every day, we wake up and we choose to follow Him because this world would dictate otherwise. So our hope and our prayer is that we would continually choose Him. And for those of us here, you're in the precipice, you're in that crossroad or you're in that decision-making time that should I follow the Lord or not? I hope that that decision, that, would, that, that factor that would throw us over the edge of giving our lives to Jesus would be the fear of Him. Would be the realization that while we were still sinners, He died for you. I hope that you meditate and ponder on that this week. But I'd like to leave us with this. As Pastor Noel said, we have to be interconnected. Some of us here, we go to church, we leave church, never really talking to anyone. It's just a matter of time when we're going to be isolated and the enemy attacks and we'll be helpless praise. You may be hearing saying, Pastor, I've given my number multiple times. No one's contacting me. Pastor, no one's, my old victory group leader before the pandemic hasn't contacted me yet. I, I hope we don't make that excuse. I hope we actively seek community. We actively seek God's community rather. And realize the, the value of walking together in Christ. We were never called in this alone, friends. We're here later on after the service. Please come to us. We'd gladly connect you. In the community of faith, you'll find strength in a, that one faith, one Lord confession. I hope we do that even this week. Why don't we pray? Lord, thank you that you are Lord. That is the confession of our hearts. I pray, Lord God, that even this week in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you would give us the grace to make those difficult decisions. You would give us the grace, Lord, to choose you, to see you in every aspect of our lives. I pray, Lord God, that you would give us the grace to surrender of whatever's not pleasing you right now. In our lives, Lord, that in the name of Jesus, we would surrender that to you and welcome your Lordship over our families, over our finances, over our workplaces, over the way that we, we decide, Lord God, of who to bless, who to be generous to, who to talk to, Lord. I pray that it will all be dictated by our confession that you are the Lord of our lives. That's not just an empty confession, Lord. 
that the way you live is the way we want to live, pleasing the Father. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that we would walk by faith and not by sight. That you would give us the grace, Lord, to overcome because you are an overcomer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face toward you. And may you be rooted, strengthened, built up by our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you again next week. 40 years of victory. We are going to look back so that we will be reminded of what God has called us to do. We are part of that victorious army, God. That nothing, Lord God, will stop the advancement of your kingdom. You are the chief cornerstone. You are the one who puts us as part of this church. It's a metaphor of victory, a picture of people celebrating in the midst of all the calamities. We can still magnify your goodness. To praise God and to let their campus know that Jesus Christ is Lord of their life. I'm excited about the greatness of the love that we have for one another. He's called us to walk with our heads high and worship Him, not in shame, we will see a harvest of students, high schools, colleges, universities, that the kingdom of God has come and that freedom is made available to them.